Hello everybody. So today we're going to be talking about memory overclocking. I picked up this kit here. This is the G-Skill Value Series. Um, this is the 8 gigabyte kit. Uh, 2400 XMP profile, 2400 megahertz XMP profile that is. Um, but we're going to be overclocking this to 3200 megahertz, cast latency 16, 18, 18, 18, 36. Um, I'm going to show you guys the steps, how to do it, how to get this, how to get this done properly without damaging anything, and show you how easy it really is, and how you can actually save some money by just doing the overclocking yourselves. Now, um, this kit here costs the eight gigabyte kit. That is, this here will cost you forty-three dollars US. You can go for the sixteen gigabyte kit, which is eighty dollars. And if you want a kit that comes with heat spreaders, the cheapest I found was a team group uh, 16 gigabyte kit here for around 90 bucks. Now this comes with a pre-programmed XMP profile, 3200 megahertz, uh, cast latency 16, 18, 18, 38. Um, but I believe that we can squeeze out that same or better performance out of, um, out of this kit here for say about half the price. You know, obviously you're you're only getting eight gigabytes here, but you know it, it is just to kind of to show you guys, you know, what you can do should you choose to go with the 16 gigabyte kit, saving yourselves 10 bucks there in the process. You can put that money towards something else. So let's go ahead and jump right into the video, and I'm going to show you guys how to do this the proper way. And here's the kit itself, smiling for the camera. Um, there's nothing special as you guys can see, no heat spreader, no LED lights, just basic value RAM. That's, you know, what G-Skills advertising, that's exactly what you're getting. Now, one thing about heat spreaders is that in most cases, not all, but in most cases, heat spreader is just for aesthetics. Um, maybe they'll reduce temperatures by a couple of degrees, but you're not getting much out of that. As long as you stay under 60 Celsius or in, you know, in, in that vicinity, you're fine. You're not going to cause any uh, uh, degrading uh, damage to your, to your memory. As long as you have plenty of ventilation in your case, you should be okay. Um, and also, this kit here in particular, or even you know, RAM like this, that does not carry a heat spreader. You rarely see the, the temperatures go up over 50 Celsius. So even when, when it is overclocked at 3 point, uh, I'm sorry, 1.35 volts or even uh, 1.4 volts, you rarely see it go, going over 50 Celsius. So it's no worries there. Um, as you can see here, looking at the kit, you know, up close, I know that the camera's going in and out of focus there, and I apologize guys, but uh, right there in the center, you have your XMP profile chip. Let me just go ahead and go back to it here. Uh, that little chip right in the center there, you see there, that's where your XMP profile is stored. You know, it's just a profile that someone else created, uh, overclocked profile for your memory. Uh, but we're going to skip through that. We're going to do that ourselves. Uh, like the matte black color to the uh, to the PCB itself, it doesn't stick out like a sore thumb or, you know, that green uh, uh, color to value RAM that you typically see out in the market. You, you get none of that here. It's very... Uh, low profile, very uh, clean, matte black color that will go with just just about any system. I mean, any, any color thing that you you can think of. I mean, looking at it here, going into, into uh, my tester system here, you see that uh, it's really unnoticeable. You know, just being that that thin without even the heat spreader, you can. I mean, if you look at it straight from from the top, you probably won't even notice that there's hardly <laughs> that there's any memory in there. But uh, it's very low profile, very inconspicuous. So I like that. I dig that. I, you know, I'm I'm very fan of that matte black color or you know or jet black color that uh, uh, two components. So I'm happy with this. It doesn't stick out. It doesn't, you know, look horrible there again with that green uh, PCB color that you oftentimes get with your cheaper RAM. So. Um, very very happy that G Skill is offering this. You know, this giving you this option here. Not to mention also that you're getting a lifetime warranty with this kit here. And that's one thing that I love about G-Skill as a company.
Okay, so the first thing that we're gonna have to do here is figure out what type of memory we've got. We're gonna need a Typhoon Burner for this, and I'll put the links uh, in the video description so you guys can go ahead and get these tools downloaded for free. And where to go get them, obviously. So um, let's go ahead and see what type of memory. So we know now that it is Hynix ICs that we have running here, um, and these are MDI ICs. Okay. So we got that information and we have um, a rank one. We're gonna do this information for using the Ryzen calculator. So that way we can get an idea uh, of where to go as far as memory overclocking. We're gonna use this tool here. I'm gonna put it aside. And uh, we'll do this. We're using the Ryzen 2600 CPU here. So we gotta stick with that. Now here's where it gets kind of tricky because as you see here you have m die but you know you have these options here some some will say a die or c die or whatever don't get confused by these letters here you want to focus on this m a or c here we have m die where is it at? here you go m top you know m die ics so we're going to go with the hynix a hynix m f r Whoosh, man, that was a pain to get out. Okay, <laughs> and then um, we're gonna set our BCLK to 100 and get the, hit the RXMP profile here. And this is the safe setting, you can try this, but I know that um, this kit here will or can reach the, um, uh, this type of uh, settings here. So we're gonna go with the fast setting and we're going to leave the voltage at 1.35 just to see if it handles it and then the rest we're going to leave the um the rest of the sub timings most of them we're going to leave on auto um uh, we're going to be sticking with 36 and 38 as was on the um uh, the other kit that i showed you the team group kit we're going to do 36 here as the vram calculator says and then we're going to change the let's see i, I believe we were changing the trc or is it the T A T fall? I can't remember which one it was that we we need to reduce. But anyway, let's go ahead and jump into the BIOS and uh, start making some changes and see how far up uh, we can get and if we can even reach these uh, these speeds. I don't know. We'll find out. But this is the goal. Okay, let's get started. All right, so we're in the BIOS now. So let's go ahead and get started with the overclocking process here. Now, as you can see here, that's the JDEC specification there for this for DDR4 uh, 2133 megahertz. Now, let's go ahead and just uh, pick a, uh, a number here. Let's go with uh, DDR4 2666 megahertz and leave everything on auto voltage, timings, absolutely everything else. Just change the uh, frequency and see how the system holds. Uh, by doing that, we can get kind of get an idea where we're gonna go with this memory. You know, if it's able to handle this simple change here, then we know that it, it's, uh, we're in the right path, let's just say that. So here we are at the desktop, everything looks uh, normal, it looks pretty stable. But I did notice that leaving the timings on auto caused the, caused the timings to be pretty loose. Here you have 18, 18, 18 across the board here. Uh, which is not good. It's not something that you want. Um, you want to try to lower this timing as much as you know reasonably, reasonably possible. So let's go ahead and look at other settings to see where uh, where our um, TRFC is at. And you know by leaving it on auto here, it doesn't look too bad. We're at what 347, which is really good. Uh, everything else uh, looks okay except for the primary timing. So let's go ahead and make some changes there and see if we can squeeze some extra. Uh, see if we can uh, squeeze some extra performance out of that This time I'm just going to change the timings. I'm not going to mess with the voltage or try to go up on the um, The frequency just see if uh, changing from 18 to 16 on the cast latency see if that if the if the system is stable and also changing our uh, TRAS uh, See if that you know if we can keep that uh, the system stable at that setting let's go ahead and pull up a CPU ID here and see what we've got if um, 
what it looks like here. So yeah, everything looks in order now. We're on the right path. Um, so I'm pretty happy with this here so far. And leaving the other latencies, or I'm sorry, the other uh, settings, especially our TRFC there, still at 347, which is pretty good for being on auto. But then again, it's only two, uh, 2,666 megahertz, so it's nothing to brag about. Without changing any settings uh, other than the frequency, I tried 2800 megahertz and it was also stable. Same voltage, same cast latencies and other sub-timings. Nothing changed. But now we're going to try to go to 3000 megahertz and see if this is stable. But in order to get to 3000 megahertz, we're going to bump up the voltage. So you may want to do that if you're planning on, you know, taking this voyage going up to the same frequency. Try 1.35 volts, see what happens. I'll leave the uh, the sub timings and the primary timings the same. And uh, 3000 megahertz is stable. I mean, at least it booted. So let's go ahead and see if we can push to 3200 megahertz. Same, we're not gonna mess with the uh, latencies. We're just testing frequency to see if the system is stable. And if not, then we'll know, we have to back down a little bit or maybe go up on the the voltage but as you can see it is stable it is it is still going so let's try and push for 3400 megahertz and see what happens and nope 3400 megahertz was not stable at all so we're gonna have to go back down to 3200 megahertz we're not going to tinker with the primary timings I did go ahead and uh, change the T fall from 30, I think it was, I'm sorry, from 23 to 16. I didn't show it here in the video, but I did change that as well. So everything else was left the same. Didn't make any changes. And now to test for stability, we're going to run Prime 95 large FFTs. Uh, we're going to leave this running for about two hours and monitor also the uh, temperatures. Um, just to make sure that we do have a stable system because there's no way to verify if our overclock is stable and if we did achieve a, a stable stable system without actually testing it. So let this run for a couple hours and see what happens. And once overclocking the CPU along with the, the new overclock setup that we have done on the memory, the 16, 18, 18, 36 uh, latency there, or um, timings, I should say. Um, here you have the results. You know, I've overclocked the CPU to 4.25 gigahertz. And uh, for read here, we have uh, 47, almost 48,000 megabytes a second, uh, 46,000 megabytes a second for the right copy, we get 41,000 megabytes. And latency we get 68.1 nanoseconds quite an improvement going from 79 nanoseconds to 68 nanoseconds you know so um, I'm very happy with this little kit and you guys can do the same just take your time follow those steps that I that I show you there in the video I mean uh, again I don't want to promise you that you're going to get the same results but you can't just by trial and error just um, you, know, you, you can squeeze out some extra performance out of your, out of your memory if you do it the right way, the, the proper way. Um, if you're trying, if you're trying to break a world world record with value RAM, that's just I don't know if that's going to to happen. But you know, for that you will probably need a very good motherboard that can um, that can give you that extra support. But um, and uh, and uh, you gotta also get lucky and get some pretty good ICs that will overclock um, higher than the usual but um yeah i'm very happy again i'm very happy with this results here so i hope you guys enjoy the video let me know in the comment section what you guys think uh, if you have any other recommendations or what your valued opinion is um, i will leave the video here i hope you guys take care i'll see you in the next one take care bye